Grand Britain. Over the years, we've had mop tops, enjoyed royal parties. There's been the Iron Lady and the People's Princess. We've enchanted the world with Cool Britannia. And courtesy of the Olympics and Danny Boyle, we discovered the ultimate power couple. Good Britain had a brand that seemed to work. But then, this happened. Britain wants a byword for unflappable cool. Became fractious and divided. So I went to see one of the top ad agencies in the country to ask if they could help create a new post-Brexit campaign to rescue the brand. How do you unify people around this one image, one brand? How can you provide a campaign? I guess where you start is you try and look for something that is unequivocally true, that people can't argue with. And they say, yes, well, you know, whatever the debate now is, I know that to be true. But is that, is that part of the problem that we've been recast through the lens of Brexit? It's yeah. quite, quite quarrelsome, yeah. quite, you yes. know, panicky. Quarrelling <laughs> little Englanders. Yeah, that's uh, right. People are going, well, what, what is happening in Britain? Do I trust it anymore? I thought I, thought I really understood it. Um, and so, so Britain has to be clear about what it really is going forwards um, and has to project that with confidence. Yes. How do, how, how do we get some swagger back to Britain without yeah. it being arrogant, yes, I suppose? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They seek him here. They seek him there. In London's Savile Row, there's plenty of swagger. Here, they're not just selling suits, but an image, an ideal. One of the architects of that image is Oswald Boateng. His journey from a North London council estate to the jewel in the crown of Savile Row gives him a great vantage point to assess how our brand is doing. What is British is a conversation that's been happening for a while, I think. Do you think Brexit's changed that conversation? Because I think, a lot I think, of people... I think, I think Brexit has confused the conversation. You felt what it is to be British was an expanding proposition and involving many other cultures into it. The thing about it is you've got a brand, it's working. It was <laughs> working. It was working. I mean, it was clearly working. Everyone was doing their companies here, everyone was doing business here. And then suddenly, no one knows what to do. The referendum exposed a deeply divided country where even the here and now is in dispute, let alone the brand destiny. With all creative or any type of vision of the future, you've got to be a bit clear about what it is. If you're not clear, how do you get there? And that seems to be very much the issue. It's not clear. Now Botang worries Brexit has stirred up some ugly ideas he hoped had been left behind in the 70s. Without a question, Brexit did kick up a certain sentiment that I hadn't experienced for a long time. And actually, as a consequence, it's had a couple of experiences that surprised me. Racism. Yeah. And so, you know... It's made, it's made racism OK again? It made almost a little bit more open for conversation where it wasn't before, which... For me, who experienced it as a kid, thinking it's behind us, was disappointing. Why is it? It's the big yeah, day back at the agency, and they've come up with three big ideas to solve our problem. Why can't we fall back on crumpets and castles and the Queen and the flag? Why not just the flag? I think the problem is what does the flag mean to people now? When you think about the symbolism of the flag and, and what Brexit has done to that, then it starts to get a little bit sticky. And this, this sort of picture of, of, of it really is a symbol of racism, it's been rehabilitated, hasn't it? There's been this sort of cool Britannia version of it, which we certainly were very exciting, cultural, progressive values. But now people are starting to say, well, what does it mean now? And you'll find plenty of people saying, actually, I'm a bit ashamed to be British. St Luke's first campaign tries to tackle just that. The truth is that Britain is famous for its history. We don't just have history, we make history, and that's where the real pride is. It's not just the truth, it's something inspiring. So many sort of, <laughs> many great sort of British epochs have been defined by fearless women. So here we have literally on the shoulders of Queen Elizabeth is Nicola Adams. You know, she's the first one to fight her way to an Olympic title. You know, she's an OBE, she's an LGBT champion. So here we have sort of modern, diverse Britain carrying on that sort of history-making heritage. 
And it's not just about uh, giving okay, Brits a history to be proud of. The next one is Game Changer Britain. It's also about reminding the world that we can be a force for modernity. The Industrial Revolution, the National Health Service. Yeah, the invention of the internet. Yeah. The cultural impact of the Beatles, the cultural impact of girl power, all of this changed the game uh, around the world. How do we put a picture to that? So here we have Meghan Markle as Britannia. Okay, <laughs> so, so of course what Meghan has done is she's changed all the rules. Of course Britannia She's a Roman goddess and she's, she, she was designed thou a thousand years ago to embody the British Isles and here she is leading in the new generation. And if Meghan doesn't inspire you, what about a child wizard? The next one is um, British brilliance. What better image than Harry Potter on a Dyson vacuum? Brilliant innovation, brilliant fiction. Or even Wallace leaning on a Rolls Royce. Innovation is, uh, is something that Britain's really known for, but it's our ability to, uh, to be irreverent, yes. uh, to create new imagery, new ideas, to juxtapose things that aren't normally juxtaposed and to create something new. If we put any one of these things on their own, it wouldn't be self-deprecating, it wouldn't be British. It's the, we, 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 we're celebrating these things, but we're also making fun of ourselves yeah. Yeah. at the same time, and that's very us, I think. Yeah. Well, folks, it's alive. How we look to the future shouldn't be limited by domestic Brexit squabbles, says one of Britain's leading industrial innovators. Stephen Fitzpatrick, founder of Ovo Energy, is the man promising to tackle climate change by rethinking our energy market. He says we often forget how strong our reputation is abroad. I think the UK is one of the best places in the world I can imagine doing business in. Brexit is a consideration, but it's nowhere near at the top of the list of things that I think about. We have a fantastic technical and engineering heritage, but also uh, in terms of openness for business and a, of an entrepreneurial culture. You accept that Brexit puts some risk on the skills market. I, I, I reject that entirely. I can't imagine for a second why our political relationship with the EU would change uh, the availability of skills and talents here in the UK. Another one of Fitzpatrick's businesses, Electric Vertical Takeoff, hopes to put the UK at the vanguard of tech innovation, exactly the brand Britain he sees taking off. When we talk to people from spaces as far away as Tokyo or Texas. People want to know what we're doing in the UK. We're seen as being way ahead of the curve. Is this a good moment to be an entrepreneur? A this, British entrepreneur? This is a great time to be an entrepreneur in the world. It's a great time to be a British entrepreneur. With that excitement comes a lot of uncertainty. We can't say what the future in 50 years is going to hold. And so I think maybe for some people that feels uncomfortable. I think for entrepreneurs, Entrepreneurs thrive on uncertainty. We see opportunities where other people see problems. We are young. Our advertising campaign hopes to show an optimistic vision of brand Britain that might just rally a divided country. The question is, will the audience abroad and at home buy into it?